and artists are always looking for the next big thing to make a lot of money. And Richard Prince, an artist, has come up with a really, really clever idea. What he basically does is he steals people's Instagram pictures, he blows them up, he exhibits them, and then he sells them. In fact, one of his pieces has sold for $90,000, and some of them have actually sold for $100,000, which is crazy. He, um, his exhibit consisted of 38 photos, one of which you see there, uh, that is Doe Deer, and apparently her photo sold for $90,000. What he does is he uh, prints the photos without permission, so he doesn't ask them if he can do it, and then they're four by five and a half foot prints that are uh, featured as a screenshot. So it's not just the photo itself, it's like the full screenshot of the Instagram page. Now, uh, Doe Deer saw that she wasn't too pleased with it because he did not ask for permission, but he's not, but she's not planning on pressing any legal charges against him. Uh, now, I think that this was a really smart idea, and I wish I would have thought about it myself, but I didn't, so I can't hate on the guy. But he has dealt with some copyright infringement issues in the past. What do you guys think of this? Uh, Christian, make your point. Yeah, I agree. I wish I would have thought of it myself, make some money. But, um, I mean, you can't hate it. Yeah, it's a little messed up. He's using other people's pictures for his beneficial... For his monetary benefit? Monetary benefit. Yeah, mm -hmm. there you go. Um... Yeah, I mean, hey, you got to do what you got to do to make a buck. I mean, there's people, like you just said earlier, like bankers, like how much fucked up shit do they do to people? Like some some CEOs of these companies that pay their workers nothing and they, they're they just eking by every day mm -hmm. and just trying to trying to eat every day, trying to feed their kids. And they don't care. I mean, and this guy's just stealing pictures and making money. He's not hurting anybody, so well, I, mean, I don't have a problem with it. I totally think he's hurting somebody because yeah. I think he's, uh, you know, taking credit and revenue from someone's uh, someone else's hard work. I mean, you saw the photo that we looked at earlier, um, which uh, I believe is a, a famous uh, Instagram makeup artist, right? And, um, you know, her craft and her her uh, photos, um, her look, all of the things that... <laughs> it's a weird photo, but... Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the value of that, I guess, is not the Instagram border, it's the photo itself. And I think that to, to profit off of something that obviously for her is a, a, maybe a lifetime of work, I think it is, it is negative. I also think it sucks. I think it just, like, uh, if this is the place we are in our culture, mm -hmm. this fucking sucks. We, I went to the Getty a couple weeks ago and we saw, like, some Impressionist paintings there. And I was just, just like, it's like we're, we're, at a, we're at a plateau where we're selling Instagram screenshots for $90,000. It's like... Sorry, kids. I hope to be more hopeful, but that 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 blows. Yeah, I mean, I try to be as supportive of artists and their creativity as much as possible, but at the same time, I do agree with you when it comes to certain modern artists. I feel like they come up with things that are so, like, simplistic, like, uh, utterly simplistic, and they make so much money off of it. And also, how do you value art? Like, how do you decide that something is worth $100,000? I wouldn't pay $100,000 for that, no. probably because I don't have $100,000 But to, even if to... you did, you wouldn't. It's all yeah. arbitrary. It's all like some elite sort of mm -hmm. group of people who have decided on high that like, oh, well, that's worth something because it's yeah. si significant because we think so. Yep, that's, that's a good point. That's how they talk. Do you know? <laughs> that is. You, sound, you sound like an artist. Yeah. All right, well, what is one object you own that actually holds a lot of sentimental value? Andy. Uh, absolutely, my camera. Um, I, I use it for work. I shoot a lot of the stuff that uh, that I produce, and um, for me, it's not only a means to uh, financial uh, fulfillment, but also a, a way of feeling creatively satisfied. Um, it, it is probably we were talking about justice in a different panel. It is the most sort of just thing. Either it looks good or or it doesn't look good, or either you get the job done or you don't get it done. And it's the most rewarding thing I think as a, as a creative person to be able mm -hmm. to to you know get that kind of um, validation from uh, an electronic box. Yeah, absolutely. Cameras are amazing, especially with what we do. It gives you so much freedom to create content that yeah. is unfiltered and basically uncensored. I, you know, that's one of the reasons why I started a vlog, because I could do whatever the fuck I want yeah. on it. You know, it's a good feeling. Christian, what about you? Um, I'm not a very materialistic person. The only thing that I value right now that I'd just lose my shit if I lost is my phone, because it's just, you do so many things on there. Yeah. So much just information at your fingertips. You can look up words like we did this morning on dictionary.com and try to figure out what the meaning of it is. Um, but for what me, a great morning. Yeah, yeah a great morning. So Yoga, wonderful. little dictionary.com, <laughs> the point. Man, you're great living day. like great day, boy. great day. But anyway, uh, as far as as far as gifts and objects like that, um, yeah, there's been stuff that my mom has given me, my family that you've given me. Um, 
But it's more, for me, it's more the thought about that, like what that gift means more than the actual gift. Like mm -hmm. I just, just objects don't really hold that much for me. It's more about the thought behind it and the love that I feel from, from that object. So what I feel has a lot of sentimental value for me is my apartment. So mm. I, I, I try to think about like one small thing, but no, my apartment as a whole, it was, it's the first apartment that I moved into after living with my parents. It's something that I like was able to independently take care of for some time before Christian moved in. And so it was it was like it was like a point of pride. And I've had so many good and some bad memories in that apartment, but I love it. I love it so much. And it's so modest. It's like a tiny little one bedroom apartment. It's nothing fancy or special. If people saw it, they'd be like, really, this is, this is what has sentimental value for you. But I love it. It just reminds me of where I am in my life and what it took to get there. And it's just, it's a point of pride for me. Yeah, a symbol of freedom and your hard work. Yeah, absolutely. Totally. But I got to say, splitting the runs for real nice. Um, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I like it too. Anyway, <laughs> tell us what you guys think. Uh, what holds a lot of sentimental value in your life? It could be something as small as a phone. It could be something as big as an apartment. You might think that there's nothing that holds sentimental value. You're totally detached. I want to hear about you. I want to hear your story. So comment in the section below and we'll see you soon.